55. 55, 55. episode 55. Uh, trifecta and RP strength, thank you. Um, and we also have, we have a new guest, Brian Nelson. What's up, Brian? Welcome, What's up? Brian. Good to be here, I, I think. I, are we, yeah, there's On only, the Brian is my, uh, my financial guy. Been working with you since what, 2011? Is that when we started? It's been six years. So six, six years? Seven. Yeah. After you won the games the first year. So, yeah. And so, Brian's always like, hey, man, give me a shout out. Hey, man, give me a shout out. I was like, hey, <laughs> why don't you just come on the podcast yeah. and we'll talk money stuff. But there's only certain things you're allowed to talk to. So, if there's something you're not allowed to talk to, just tell Ellie to shut up. No, no, no. We he has a, a, code a code word, word. remember? Oh. What's a code word? Cobra Kai. Cobra, Cobra Kai. Kai. Cobra Kai. <laughs> if we have to move on from a subject, just uh, Cobra Kai. Cobra nope. Kai. You just end it certain, there and you move on. There's certain things you can't We got some confidentiality issues here. And so, we got to, we got to, you can't. You can't endorse a certain stock. You can't do that type of stuff. That's so. right. But I thought, you know, today would be a great opportunity to teach people general finance. Because there's a lot, like, I mean, there's a lot to learn. And there are a lot of books and a lot of resources out there. So I thought maybe, well, first, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background? Um, background. He's an Auburn fan. I am an Auburn fan. Oh, wow. gross. So, bad weekend last weekend. It's been a bad year. I'm been sorry. A bad, year. <laughs> bad couple of years. You guys, <laughs> you guys had a little up, up swing at the beginning of the season. And then one game. Then was it Florida? Was Florida LSU. your first loss? LSU yeah. was your first loss. Uh-huh. Last year they were our first. Because you guys were what top ten for a little while, weren't you? Top six or five. Yeah. Maybe. Malzone's gonna get fired. We pray. We, we, <laughs> we have a GoFund. GoFund. <laughs> no, you do not. Okay. What's it up to? I don't know. How long has he been around? Not enough. Not enough. Um, you know, he was there as the offensive coordinator. We won the national championship. Yeah. Then he left for Arkansas State for a year. Okay. Fire Chizik brought him back, and he's been there for four. Maybe five years. I'm going to get killed. All the about to slap me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but but uh, everybody's ready for him to go. Yeah. So I mean, we, we have like a top five recruiting class every year, and mm. we finish like 30th in the country. So from a financial standpoint, that's not good math. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Top five. But a guy 30. like that, you know what? Uh, the truth is he's not hurting for money. No. You know, I, whether I, he has a job mm. or not, he's just fine. I don't feel sorry for those dudes. You got to win. I, I would take the buyout. Yeah. Give me $32 million to go fish for, you know. Absolutely. That's the buyout? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, geez. They're making okay. Big okay. I never feel sorry for a coach getting fired at that level. No. Because they got a contract. They're fine. Yeah. But you know what I mean? They'll go somewhere be an offensive Les coordinator. Miles, and they're working yeah. Yeah, Les, Les Miles. Miles is still getting paid from LSU. And now yeah. he's going to Tulsa. That's right. Did you see Mac Brown's going to UNC? Are you serious? Yeah. I did not see that. I, yeah. see that. I thought Miles was going to... Not Tulsa. Where was he going? He, he was, was going originally to going to Michigan a while ago. He's not going to Tulsa. Mm. I don't know where he's going. It's not Tulsa. Oh, it's I thought it was Tulsa. Somewhere up north, though. Kansas. 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 That's Kansas. right. That's right. That's right. I thought it, for some reason I was thinking it was Tulsa. Which is one so of the cool... So gets out. Louisiana gets out of paying the rest of his buyout. Out. Uh, so they have, he has to give uh, that up. So they're all celebrating. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I was going to say, so that's... That's more, more money to pay the players. Right. So. I, I just got heartbroke. Um, Demarius Thomas is one of my favorite players for the Broncos. He won me fantasy football last night. I needed that. Ah. Yeah. I needed nine points from him and he got me 17 or 18. Yeah. He's a good player. And, and we're talking <laughs> about money, him. right? Yeah, we're sure. just talking about Trade money. him to the Texans. Sure. Trade him to the Texans because he was like 17 million against the cap next year. And so it's a business Jeez. deal. Not that they wanted to get rid of him. Yeah. But he they hadn't had, done anything with them all year though. They hadn't thrown a ball to him at all. So. Well, they had a, they, and they had a rookie step up. Did but they? it's the money part of football that gets him traded instead of how he plays and how, how he, he plays performs. And it's the money part of every sport that gets you drunk. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. And it's the money part of your life that'll sink you. <laughs> yeah. You don't get that right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, I met Rich six, seven years ago. I was telling Darren the story yesterday. It was kind of crazy. I don't really know if I'm allowed to tell this story. But the first time that I met with Rich was at his old house. And he had a little round table in the kitchen. And so I, I, I'm trying to figure him out. I'm sure he's trying to figure me out. He just won the games. He's training for the – he just won his first games. He's training for his second. And so I'm at the little kitchen table. Hillary's all into it, you know, like, we're going to be rich. We're going to be broke. I mean, what's the deal? <laughs> and I can see Rich, like, the whole time, you know. He's like, he's out here and he's looking his watch, you know. Yeah. Looking his watch. And I start to fill out paper. He's like, I'll be right back. I'm like, that's in the middle of a meeting. So – he gets up, walks outside. I'm, you've been his old. You've been to his old house, mm-hmm. right? He's got this big oak tree in the back. And I look out the window, and he's going up and down this road <laughs> three <laughs> you times. You left a meeting to go exercise. I'm in the middle of our first meeting. <laughs> he, he leaves there, and he walks around the corner of the house. I don't know where he's at. So Hillary's like, he probably went to the garage. So we walk out there. He's in there squatting. He comes back in the house. He's like, oh, we got five minutes. 
So yeah. we, we filled as much as we can. He said, I'll be right back. So three or four <laughs> rounds much, later. Not much has changed. No, so like that's a, exactly how it is. A 30-minute meeting turned into like a three-hour wad slash financial paper. Wow. Yeah, it was great. So I've, I've learned now, like when I come here, instead of like planning for three-hour meeting, mm -hmm. I just have to come for two days because you get 20 <laughs> minutes here, 30 minutes here. Did but you yeah. cross me at that time? Because you worked out with us today. Yeah. yeah that's, that's how we how, met. That's how, that's I how met we met. Oh, okay. Through yeah. Brett. Through Brett. Gotcha. Yep. So. Yeah, Brett, oh, so you've Brett. been doing it for a long time too. Yeah, I mean I'm 28 now, so uh, <laughs> now that's, uh, that's exactly how it works. I did the same thing years, yesterday. Nine years, maybe. Yeah, I got right before the workout. I got some three little in. business points in real quick as he's moving away. Oh yeah, just stay on his hip. Try to talk to him. <laughs> if he looks <laughs> pissed, don't yeah. say anything else. <laughs> if he looks like he's receiving it, it's, right. see, it's not, it's not. It's not the person. It's just how I am. That's how it works. I mean, it's me. We got, we got it's not me. Done. It's not you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. Yeah. yeah. I've heard that before. Well. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of times. Yeah. Let's don't talk about this. It's all fine. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, did you always know you were a numbers guy? Like, no. were your mentors into numbers? No. It was, uh, it's really a God thing uh, from a testimony standpoint. I went in the military, got out, and really had no clue what I wanted to do, what I needed to do. I was... I needed to go in the military for sure because I went to college, and stayed a couple of weeks, and you know, <laughs> dad said that's not going to work. So I got back from the military, and my dad worked on the railroad. So naturally, you just feel like you got to go work on the railroad. So I spent 13 years there. Probably five years before I quit, I felt like God had told me that I was I was going to leave the job. I didn't really know where I was going. So I started telling people on the railroad I was leaving. Didn't really know why, where. And long story short, the guy that managed my money come to me, made a proposition. I was like, dude, I don't know anything about this, you know. Uh, so I started praying, started studying uh, while I was still working for the railroad. Passed a bunch of exams that's required, you know, to series six, seven, things of that nature. And um, The railroad gave me a, like a 10-month leave of absence. So I'd been there 13 years. And I went in about six months into it. I called him like, I'm not coming back. Just kind of found my groove, you know. Uh, it just, it's one of those things like for rich or people who train is good at it, which is not me, but it kind of comes natural, you know? Mm -hmm. So the whole stuff, all the terminology that you'll probably ask me today just kind of click, you know? So it's pretty amazing for that to come naturally from like most I, people, like, you know, not, well, I don't want to say it's natural, no, but, but I mean, it was easy. Like the terminology kind of just kind of makes sense from a yeah. puzzle standpoint, you know, like. It's taken oh. me six years to understand what the hell he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, I, really, I really don't want him to understand what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> then he don't need me anymore. Right. Yeah. So That's I'll what I'm saying. That's a cool gift to term. have for yeah, sure. I think so. I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a calling as well. You know, I feel like yeah. that's where God's placed me because, you know, I think me and Rich have also, in the middle of money talk, you're always going to talk about family. People are going to talk about their life, what's, what's, where they're struggling. So I, I probably... I tell people all the time I'm probably 10% financial advisor, 90% psychiatrist or counselor. I could imagine. Well, because I mean, money is one of the most delicate subjects for most people. Absolutely. So I imagine the counseling mm -hmm. gets interweaved with that pretty quickly into the yeah. conversation. I mean, if somebody's going to talk about money, they're going to talk about everything. You know, whether it's because it's involved. I mean, it's a lot of us. I mean, statistics, I think, from, you know, from marriage standpoint, most divorces, I think the top reason is financial. Mm -hmm. You know, see, it's, it, it really, and God, <laughs> if we read the New Testament, Jesus speaks more about money. Or there's more uh, term, uh, more reference to money than there is hell because mm -hmm. it has such the, such an ability to get us off track or to control our life, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very, very, very delicate slash balanced, you know, aspect that needs to be handled carefully. So that being said, like, I mean, you're saying – you know, that's one of the top reasons for divorce and things like that. Do you have like baseline suggestions or advice for people when it comes to, when you first sit with somebody, are there things that are just foundational that you're like, these are goals for you to set for, or do this or don't do this? Like any just general advice. Um, Remember that yeah. advice you gave Adam? What was that advice you gave my 18 year old cousin? Like the 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, yeah. 10, 10, 80. So really when you sit down with somebody, when I do, I'm, you have to kind of figure out the person. A, they have a goal. So if, if and just to be honest, you can't be everything for everybody. So if somebody comes in, hey, I need you to help me you know, do a budget. Me and my wife are really. I mean, I'm gonna have to say, go. You, you probably need to go see Dave Ramsey or go to a program like that. Mm -hmm. I don't really. But as far as somebody comes and goes, hey, I'm I'm 41. What do I need to do to retire at 68? You know, or or his cousin comes in and goes, hey, listen, I, I'm starting off. Give me something basic. And so mm -hmm. I tell people, the basic financial plan for me 
that I, anybody could do successfully is 10, 10, 80. And I'd say, you know, give 10% away. Whether I would, I would say, you know, in the form of a tithe or church or offering or, mm-hmm. you know, give it away kingdom pope for me. But the mm-hmm. other is save 10% and live off 80. Mm-hmm. And so if you could save 10%, give away 10% and live off 80, you'll be successful over a period of time. Mm-hmm. Right. So I like that. It's, it's very simple, you know. It's, it's, it is simple in concept. It's hard. It's hard to, to live it out. I mean, every, it's easy when I sit down and I show like a, a graph and I go, "Hey, this is what this thousand dollars compounded eight percent would have done over thirty five years." And they're like, "Oh man, yeah, let's do it." I'm like, "Have you ever had a car payment mm-hmm. for five hundred dollars a month for five years?" And they're like, "Yeah." It's like, how bad did that suck? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh god, you know. I'm like, well, we're talking thirty five years here. This takes a lot of discipline, you know. So pay yourself first is another mm-hmm. thing. That's another terminology I use all the time because. Usually you get paid, and the first thing you do, man, I got to pay the power company, mm-hmm. I got to pay my visa, I got to pay the house payment. I'm going. Uh, you have to build your budget around your savings. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. like, when Rich gets paid, he needs to pay Rich. Right. You know, that's why he's working. He works so you don't have to work forever. And so you pay yourself first, and then at the end of that, I tell people, as far as your budget, they go, man, I want this house. I'm like, well, you save this amount of money. And let's see what you have left, and we'll see if you can afford the house. Right. Not let's get the house, and let's figure out how to save 10% or 15 That's not the route to go. Can you so. talk about, so you just mentioned compounding, and I think that's a lot of things that people, like, you know, someone says, oh, you need to invest and do more. And to a lot of people, that's like Chinese, but that's because a lot of times people don't understand the aspect of compounding over time. If you invest this sum here, 20 years from now, you have, assuming you invested it in the right place. Can you just go into that and explain that a little more? Yeah, it's just like uh, when you talk about compounding or you got tax deferred, okay, that's just basically the money, is, you know, like if you have 8% compound, that's, that's just 100000 made 8%. Now you got 108000 making 8%. It's just compounding internally. Internally, yeah. Um, and 8% is 8 or 9% is the stock market, roughly, right? right. It'll be over Cobra how Cobra many years? Cobra Cobra. Cobra. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I can't, <laughs> sorry. I can't say that. I mean, right. you know, historically, if you, if you was to look at the, you know, I would tell people this is what the <laughs> S&P index has done the last right, 10, right. 20, 30 years. So I can never go, oh, this is going to do 8%. Right. So, but yeah, his, you know, history usually repeats itself. I mean, historically, Solomon, yes. Solomon says that in the book of Ecclesiastes, nothing new under the sun. It's just a, it's a constant mm-hmm. cycle. So, um, and, and just to give a shout out to, to the Bible, that's where the book of Ecclesiastes <laughs> is where 90% of like my financial planning comes from. Really? Yeah. It's Ecclesiastes 11. You know, that whole chapter, you know, he starts off talking about casting your bread upon the waters in many, many days. He comes back, you know, then he goes on the next verse. He talks about, he puts his assets in six or seven different baskets because he knows not what may befall the earth. Really? This is Solomon. Mm-hmm. Then he goes on talking about sowing, you know. He says, hey, if you wait for the, you know, the weather's going to be bad. We don't know what's coming. He's like, mm-hmm. you've got to sow when it's windy. You've got to sow when it's sunny. All these concepts. And so that, that comes back when I start talking to people. Like, I'm, you know, I'm explaining, like, it's time, okay? It's diversification. And it's you do it when it's good and when it's bad. So, like, what's going on right now? The stock market's kind of backed up last, you know, we, me and Rich talked about this last night. I was like, man, we went from here to here. I'm like, okay, that's the stock, stock market gets paid, too. You know, like, it's, you have to be able to stay focused and disciplined. And matter of fact, Warren Buffett, you know, he the, his famous saying is, he says, when other people are greedy, he's fearful. When other people are fearful, he's greedy. Mm-hmm. So this is in, in in intelligent terms, this would be a great time to buy, you know. Right. But that's not what happens to most people. So right now, the phone's ringing off the hook. What are we gonna do? What's going on? What are we gonna do? I'm like, we're not gonna do anything, you know, <laughs> unless our unless your plan, you know, like Jim said, hey, if, if we'd have started, you know, five years ago, and this was the year you was gonna start you know, retrieving dollars, we may not. Hey, we need to we need to be thinking about what's going on. But somebody right. like Rich, you know, Rich got you know thirty more years, you know, for his his retirement hit. So, I mean, there's, there's not nothing that we would look right. at as something to panic a, over. Let's see, so, it's a little blip. It's so, part of the yeah, process. The whole, the whole compound and diversification, you know, tax deferment. Tax deferment is huge, okay? So, you have to, you, you know, here's another example. Um, I may get in trouble for all this. You can you know, use me as an example. I don't no, care. No, 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 no. Um, I'm just talking about biblically, like when Joseph had the dreams and he interpreted it for, for Pharaoh, you know, and he's like, seven hey, the, years. The dreams, and like, he said, Hey, you're going to have seven years of this prosperity. You have seven years of famine. So we need to take one fifth of the prosperity every year and put it in the King's treasury. Why would we put it in the King's treasury? Because it ain't taxed in the King's mm-hmm. treasury. Don't go put it in the bank. Don't go put it in your, you know, because if you get a, if you, if you got a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, you're going to get a 1099 for interest. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, and you're probably not keeping up with inflation as well. So um, if you've got $100,000 in a tax-deferred vehicle, whatever you make, you're not getting a 1099. So now we're compounding interest. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that, that money that you would have paid somebody else, the government, you're going to make money on that money. Well, how do you teach people? So, I mean, one of the biggest things with there are all these ways to, you know, find, you know, tax deferment, investment, this, that. But the issue that people run into that they're not aware of, and this also parallels to like a 401k, is the fees. I, I mean, it wasn't until what? It was within the last decade that people were informed, allowed to know what the 401k fees were. Mm-hmm. Before a decade ago, people didn't know. Right. You didn't know how much you were ever going to see of that later on. And now, you know, you can figure that out. So as you're saying, like, there are a lot of good options out there, but how do you counsel people and protect them from finding out fees and actually making sure? Because, I mean, we're looking at incremental amounts of money compounding over time. If you're balancing that out with fees and you aren't aware of them, you end up with very little. So sure. how do you counsel people against that? Because that's the biggest, a lot of people won't invest because they're like, oh, fees are a racket. You know what I mean? It's fair enough. Uh, let's, let's back up to the 401k. So when you talk about a 401k fees, most of those fees are, are, are held by... Can you even back that up further and say... Just explain what a 401k is. 401k is, is operated. It's like an, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, how would I explain this? It's a, it's a company-based retirement, okay? So mm-hmm. it's where the employer, like Rich, we have one here at Mayhem, okay? Rich goes to his employees, go, hey, you can defer some of your money into this account, okay? This is a, this is a savings account. It's a retirement account. You know, this is not designed to touch before 59 and a half. And I, want, I definitely want to talk about that, what happens when you get money out pre-59 and a half okay. IRAs because people do it all the time. Most, it's the worst mistake you can make in finance. Um, so anyway, you got this this plan going on, and these people, it's like a, everybody's putting their money in here. They got these investment options they can pick from, mutual funds. So the the, the, the rich who, who oversees the 401K, okay, it's his business. He is the one that really needs to understand the fees because he's the one that has to pay the fees. So he has like a, a TPA, okay, it's, we do our we do our uh, 401K through American funds. So they, they the platform is through American funds. So mm-hmm. – you know, American Funds gets paid, TPA gets paid. You know, it's third-party administrator. They oversee, like, making sure everything's up to compliance. And that, you know, all that comes in. That's really the fee. So, like, if you're a part of the 401K, what you really need to focus on is the mutual funds or the, the investments in it. So, in any investment, I tell people, whether it's in a 401K, so the same fund, okay, the Growth Fund of America could be in your 401K. It could also be in your Roth IRA, okay, which is a personal IRA, okay. So, there's an expense ratio in that mutual fund. Mm-hmm. Okay, which means that's what you're talking about. So when you're talking about a mutual fund inside of a 401k or possibly a, a Roth IRA, a traditional IRA, whatever IRA, SEP, um, this management fee is what the fund company itself is charging to manage the money. Okay, so that's where you need to look and go. Like Growth Fund of America A share may be, <coughs> I don't know, 70 basis points. That may be the operational cost, okay? Mm-hmm. And you may see this other large cap mutual fund, and I go, man, the, this has got a good return, but the, the cost to operate it, if you look inside the prospectus, is 1.6%. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, we've got this huge difference. That's 80 basis. That's that's a, you know, almost 90 basis points a year. Okay, what does that mean? That means if that if that fund that year lost, you know, 10%, it really only, it really only lost 9.1, and they got their fee added to it. So, you, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. you, you're paying them regardless. If it made 12, you probably only, it would have made 12.9 mm-hmm. if you weren't paying fees. So. That well, sense. Yes. So, so that's kind of what you need to look at inside. So if for the employee at a 401k, this it's at the company itself that's working there. I would I would be more apt to go when you when you look at when they give you your kit, the portfolio. I mean, you're going to have all the investments. It's going to have like your three, five, ten year return. It's going to have the expense ratio. You can look over there and go, man, I, I really want to be investing in you know something that's costing me one point. Well, I think that the bottom line too is that there are you know resources online. Sure. as well as what the people are signing and looking at that are going to give you that percentage and number. And you should check that and cross-reference it with anything else just to make sure for people that even that don't understand. So you can see a baseline of where you are because I think a lot of people just go through the motions with things like 401ks, correct or no? Correct. I mean, Correct. But here's the thing about it. The biggest thing about a 401k that, you know, is, is the company 90% of the time you're getting a match. So like if you're doing a traditional... Like if you're just doing your own IRA, you're not getting a match. I mean, you're you're, not, you're doing it for yourself through yourself. If somebody's doing it here, 
You know, they're getting a match. Rich is going, hey, the first three percent you put in, we're going to match you dollar for dollar. This okay. is the part that most people are interested in. This, yeah. Most people aren't paying attention to the fees piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, really it's understanding the match. the match, you know. So let's go back and somebody go, if somebody comes to me and they go, hey, I got my company's got a 401k down here. There's no match. I go, all right. I go, how much are you putting in? Well, I'm putting in, you know, about four grand a year. Like, I just do my own IRA, you know, if it was me. Because you got to have more options. You know, why do it? You, got, you get the same funds. You're not going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Match free money. Like, so if you put 3% in, they give you 3%, you just had 100% return on your money. I mean, who yeah. else can promise you that? Right. Like, you know, you just made 100% on your money. That ends up being one of the basic, that's you know, fundamental investment that's a good one if you can get that match. Right. Now, when you leave, like, so if, if Joe, if Johnny, you know, leaves here and he takes off and they go, hey, you got an option, you leave your money here, you got to do something for 401k, okay? 90% of the time, this is what happens. We're just going to cash it out, Okay. Worst mistake you can make. Okay, so you got this guy's got thirty thousand. He cashes it out. First of all, they're going to withhold twenty percent. Federal government's going to like you don't even get twenty. And then he thinks at that point, well, that's all I had to pay. Then you got to pay your. All right. Well, so what <laughs> happens then is you got thirty grand to come out. They're going to add that onto your income. So if you had a hundred grand, you made a hundred grand this year. Now you made a hundred thirty. You don't even know that. Okay, and that that thirty grand is is taxed at your ordinary income rate plus ten percent. Plus ten percent. Plus ten percent. After that 20% oh, yeah. they already took. No, I mean, so that, that's going to be some of it. But let's just say between your tax bracket and the 10%, it wound up being a total of 33, uh, 38%. All right, you've only paid 20. So at the end of the year, the guy gets a 10, you know, the IRS comes calling, go, hey, you know, we need this other two grand. What are you talking about? I didn't pay the taxes, <laughs> you know? So you give up, you, you, you know, I tell people between state, I mean, you give up 40% of your, of your money. to go by, they go, I'm going to cash it out. Me and my wife want a new car. I'm like, Ooh, 40%? Yeah. Like, you know, you can finance the car for a five. You know, why would yeah. you want to, you're going to give up 40%. That's eight years worth of finance. You know, like, right. that's dumb. So, but it happens all the time. I, I I, mean, I wish I could say it didn't happen in my office. I wish, you know, I counseled better maybe, but it doesn't. <laughs> People, you know, they just make emotionally irrational decisions, you know. What um, are the other common mistakes that people make? You were saying one other one about uh, doing something before 59. Yeah, t- so any t- yeah. All that. So like Taking if you leave your 401k, before. let's just say if you any IRA, any qualified plan, uh, and you mentioned annuities earlier. Mm-hmm. So if you got somebody that's got an annuity, that's not even an IRA. It could be an IRA, but no, it wouldn't make sense. But, but anyway, if if they had an annuity, it's a tax deferred vehicle, and they come in here at 52 and say, man, we gotta, we got to cash that money out. Well, the, the gains on that annuity, tax it, 10% penalty. So anything that's, anything basically qualified or tax deferred, you take it out before 59 and a half, you're going to pay a 10% penalty on top of the tax. So, so really only if there's like some sort of big life emergency or illness is, or sickness. No, there is. That's what we, got, I mean, we consider to talk about. The, the government does give, you know, for first time home buyers, you can take out some money out of an mm-hmm. IRA. You know, there's college for your kids. There's, there's different things in a 401k. You can borrow from a 401k. You can borrow for certain you meet, if, however the 401k is drawn up. So we drew his up a certain way, with, you know, when they draw those guidelines up of mm-hmm. hardship, what they consider a hardship. Right. So, yeah, you could take a loan out. But guess what? If you don't pay the loan back. Yeah. And here's another thing. Man, I took a loan out, and now I'm 65, I'm retired. They're thinking, I don't have to pay that. There's no penalty. Yeah, there's a penalty because you took it out pre-59 half. Right. So you always got to pay the loan back or you're going to pay the tax, you know. So can't get you can't get away from the, the tax dollars. This is why I just dig a hole in my backyard and put all my money in. <laughs> that is brilliant. Said no, one, said no one ever. I got a big old dog back there guarding it. <laughs> well, so what other Inflation's practical killing. advice? Um, <clears throat> as or a, mistakes that you see people. What are the common mistakes well, was, you see people make? Just, you, did, you didn't like that we paid yeah. off the house. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, How didn't. come? I just I felt like that was... Know, that those dollars could have been they could have been used, invested yeah been but invested. i my personal i just so, like to have something paid so off that's a good uh, that's, that's a good thing to talk about that's hey, what i said earlier people, up a little bit. people um you have to figure out what people want to do okay mm-hmm. like just because i think it's the best thing and even if, maybe it is the best thing and you go hey that's not the route i want to go then my job is to facilitate make the best of what you want to do right so Rich wanted to pay his house off, and that's great. Now you know he don't you know have a house payment. So my my and he's done the right thing with that. So you know if you're going to pay your house off, 
let's hammer down the investments. So what mm-hmm. you were saying though is you could take that money, <clears throat> sure, that you paid off the house with, mm-hmm. invest it, and make more than you would Cobra pay Ka, in interest. Ka. Sorry, we can't promise you. Right, more. right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. But in <laughs> theory, the I mean, you could. Yeah, make I mean, more co- money. I didn't want to take that chance. Right. Conceptually. So I was like, but that's- conceptually. And I, I said, I want to pay my house off. And he was like, all right, right. I don't think we should do that, but we'll do that. Right. So how do you, uh, I don't know if that's something. And, you a, need t- to and know, a house but- payment's a tax write-off. It's a write-off. Right. Right. It, it, is. it is. It is. Pay it. it is. But so it's, personally, it's, I just don't yeah. want to have a house but payment. Yeah. You don't want that you, hanging over your head. I mean, is that based on. Do advisors do that? Well, I, I, no, I mean, I understand like, yeah, right. like the cash flow side, like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Invest that. That makes complete sense. But there's no guarantee, there's no guarantee to, hit, right, to, hit, to what he's saying about the volatility. Like no one has any idea if something catastrophic is going to happen. So you're banking on that cash flow and enjoying that deduction. But so is that based on everyone assessing market conditions and this and that and being like, yeah, for 10 years, you're, you're relatively, we're not going to say you are safe in doing that versus I don't see why you wouldn't pay it off, recoup something and then reinvest because I mean, that's a much greater risk based on the unknown aspect. And I mean, that's well, just, it, if I didn't believe that the markets would perform, mm-hmm. I would, a, I wouldn't be saving a dime today in the markets and B, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So I have to believe that the markets will perform. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know if really I should say it. I, if you look back at like a rolling period, which would be mm-hmm. any 10 years, okay, mm-hmm. 18, 2018 to 08, or, you know, pick a year, 2005 to, not, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, 10-year rolling period, I'm going to go on a limb here, and somebody's probably going to call in and tell you I'm wrong, but I would bet you that seven out of 10 of any rolling period you find were good years in the stock market, okay? So, I mean, here we are this year, go back eight years, mm-hmm. okay? So... We had 08, we had 11, I think 15 wasn't that good. So, you know, and what about the other years? They were really good, you know? Yeah. So we always, people like put all the emphasis on the bad, you know? So once again, everybody's different. So if there's a big chunk of money sitting here and I go, all right, take this money, invest it. Let's use this to try to make money and pay the house off at a slower pace. You know, do I think that would work? I think it would, absolutely. And I think in 20 years we'd have the house paid off and all that money and a whole lot more. That's what I think. Right. Okay. Now, the negative of that is you give somebody $300,000 and go, don't pay the house off. I mean, you know, we're going to do this. And then six weeks later, they get 30000 there to go buy a boat. Then they take 20000 to go to Europe for a, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It crashes the whole plan. The same concept of, you know, when you see people, this is a word I say it all the time. They go to the bank, consolidate their loans so they can pay off their credit cards. So whoever's listening to this, they go pay off all their credit cards. And so now they don't have any debt except the one payment at the bank. Oh, this is pretty simple. So now we go two years later, got the credit cards charged back up. Now they got all the credit cards and the bank loan. So, you know, it's all in the person, how he manages the money. I wouldn't tell that to everybody. Like I told Rich, Mm -hmm. there is people I go, pay it off, pay this off, pay this off. Because if you give it to them, they'll use it. You just kind of have to fill out your, you know, I mean, it's just. But isn't that, is that also based on like, again, like if you're dealing with someone who lives off of a commission-based income or prize money or, I mean, I feel like there's so many factors. Do you, I guess, sorry, my real question is, so for instance, You said like, that while I go, this was your real question. I know. Okay. I can't, I'm going to keep going, going back to my real. She's going to have a lot of real questions. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as my grandpa used to always teach us, he would always say, he had like equations and taught us equations for like holding power. So if you're going to invest in this piece of real estate, you're in his mind required to have X amount of dollars to take care of all these things, the costs associated. So when you're telling or advising someone to pay, not you, any, any advisor in general, will say that okay. to pay something off. Is that also predicated on them having a certain amount of holding power mm-hmm. and occupation? Or is that just your rule of thumb is we've seen this perform. We're going to go that route. No, no, it's, it's, it's all predicated on the situation. So, you know, if, if we if this war we're paying off is forty grand, we don't want to take forty grand of everything we have to pay it off. So we really, you know, be cash poor. I want people, you know, especially you got somebody like an athlete. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you can't. You have to be prepared to like operate a long period of time without a without a paycheck. So for somebody in his shoes is our, our most common guys that go to work in my. I say, hey, you need six months worth of income saved up. Mm-hmm. You know, so. 
if we got six months of income saved up, then we have a lot of freedom. Okay. We can go pay off something and then start building that back up. Mm-hmm. Right. So something happens, we got six months and then you go, man, what happens after six months? Well, as an advisor, if I'm sitting down with you early on, I'm going to go, Hey, we need to, you probably need disability insurance. Okay. So most of my clients that are professionals that work for themselves, I encourage them, you know, we, we need disability. You know, you protect, you protect your ability to earn income. You know, if you go to work for somebody, most of the time they have like a group disability plan or something. I encourage everybody to sign up. I mean, I have one at my, through my company. I'm signed up, you know. Um, hope I never use it. But, you know, so six months of income, you pay something off. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what you said about each person understanding what their goals are, you know, that was what you said foundationally. Absolutely. It's super important. In my life, the idea that we we own everything and it's all paid off is the it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me and there was so much peace after that mm-hmm. and that became more important to me than anything else um, and being in a position to and I I fought hard to get in that space I made a lot of mistakes early and then fought hard to get into that space and it revolutionized my life because I knew it was fine mm-hmm. I knew everything was done and it was taken care of and everything we're doing we were building from there so so you're but you're at this point you're probably saving money. For sure. Okay. For sure. That's what I'm like. So you have to be able, if you're going to pay things off, yep. you have to be very aggressive yep. and going, all right, this is why I did this. Now I have yeah. the ability to save money. Not that now I have the ability to do a whole lot more because I don't have any debt. You know? No, I mean, we went the other you way. Got, yeah, we you got to pick and choose. What you're, what, yeah. You know, got in a position to be able to have that kind of freedom. Correct. Of mind and of finances. and Correct. Yeah. So I, I understand when you say, I want to pay the house off, yeah. well, I get it. Yeah. But yeah. then as soon as That's, we paid it off, we started, I mean, we were already investing, but we still are investing way more now. He, he, yeah, just aggressively, we got, all right, this is what we would have been using on house payments. Let's, yeah. not, let's, let's start saving money. Yeah, that's awesome. So, a um, couple of, like we talked about earlier, you asked me about a Roth IRA. Mm-hmm. Everybody that can participate in a Roth IRA needs to be in a Roth mm-hmm. IRA. So, and I wrote the limits down because they change in, they are changing in 2019. And the goal was to go through really basic questions first, but we just kind of threw the hammer down. So, know, so, yeah. so maybe we go we back to that. And can you explain what an IRA is in a Roth IRA? Let's uh, uh, backtrack okay. here. Two different kind of IRAs. You got a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA. Okay. Traditional, basically, you're going to be taxed on the back end. You get a tax break on the front end. Roth IRA, you don't. You have no tax break on the front end. All your tax benefit comes on the back end. Okay. So it's a difference in tax-free income or taxable income. So a lot of that comes down to where you're at in today's tax world, okay? So you have to evaluate, am I, am I going to be better off by taking the tax break now, paying the tax letter based on what I make, or vice versa, okay? But I would say for the most part, if you can qualify for a Roth, which in 20 is coming up, if you make over $137,000 an individual, you can't put money in a Roth. If you make over 203000 as a couple, you can't participate in a Roth. And there's a phase-out period. It's like at 127 for an individual, it starts phasing out. It uh, starts phasing out at 193 for couples. So a Roth IRA that is so beautiful because the tax, I think, it's been put to this way. I tell people, this is the analogy. I come from a small country town. All right, everybody's like, you know, farmer. Or, and I tell people, I was like, if you could, if you was a farmer, you know, and you had a thousand acres to farm, and you could go, and the government said, "Hey, we we, we could you can buy this seed. And we'll give you a tax break on this this seed. Then when you harvest this thousand acres, you have to pay tax on all the crop. Would you want to do that, or would you want to pay tax on the seed you're going to buy now, and not have, and to, not pay have to pay tax when you harvest the thousand acres? Well, I don't want to pay tax when I harvest. That's for all my, you know, same concept mm-hmm. Roth IRA. So a little now." That you pay tax on. So the limits in 2019, you can put $6,000 in a Roth IRA. $6,000 in traditional. What you put inside those IRAs, you can do whatever. I mean, you can put stocks in there. You can put ETFs in there. You can put mutual funds in there. You can put bond, whatever you want to put in. So they get to pick. They get what, to pick. Yeah. What so, they invest in. Absolutely. Where the money's coming absolutely. from. Absolutely. And so, you know, if you can participate in the Roth, that means you probably, you're not in this, this, killer, high, this killer tax bracket. I would take the Roth, you know. Uh, because of the tax-free income. A lot of 401ks, um, which Rich has it here, has a Roth option in the 401k. So now you got the ability to participate in a Roth IRA, you know, even if you do make over a certain amount. But once again, it, it's based upon your tax bracket. So is it better, 
you know, some people, hey, you need the tax break now, you know, based upon your income as opposed to what you'll be doing when you retire. Because you can control the distributions in an IRA. So if, if, I, if I retire, you know, and I have, let's just assume that, that Jim retires and he has $2 million in his IRA when he's 59 and a half, he can withdraw that however he wants. He don't have to take $2 million out. He don't have to take, you know. So if he goes, I want to take, you know, 5% a year off of that, I would say that's brilliant. Okay, so now he's going to take a hundred grand off his IRA for the rest of his life, but it's still gaining interest too. Uh, whatever, Cobra left. Kai. Okay, but sorry. it should. <laughs> right. yeah. okay. So gotcha. it's the best okay. part. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes. If 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 we're uh, if we if you're invested, you know, I think right. Properly, you leave it in. You leave it in, so it's still doing something. Absolutely. And then you're just taking five yeah. percent. Whereas if you take that lump sum out, it's not doing anything. So like if we historically look back, gotcha. what's the S and P right. index done? And you go, well, it's done more than five percent over. This 20 years. Right. So what happens if we would have been taking out 5%, our account would have grown. Right. So I would say, this is the advice I give. I tell people, whatever your balance is, I would advise you to take out 5%, max 6% if it's dire need. That would be your, and then do it based upon your annual balance. Not like if you started with 2 million, $100,000 your income for life. No. What if it's grown to... 2.3 2.3 million. You're taking 5% off 2.3 million. Right. So I'm saying, so that's the whole concept with doing that management because you got to keep up with inflation. That's what people, that's another thing. People never factor into their savings. Okay. They, they go, they go, uh, here's, this is a good point. So if somebody goes, I go, what do you want to retire? What much money do you want to retire, Jim? And you go, man, if I had, man, if I had a hundred thousand dollars a year, that'd be great. No mm-hmm. debt. All right. So when are you going to retire? I'm about 25 years out. Well, let's, let's figure inflation into that. Okay, at three percent. So in twenty five years, you're going to need almost like one hundred ninety eight thousand dollars to do what a hundred to do today. That changes the ball game. Mm-hmm. So you know when you're looking at retiring, you're looking at planning. You have to factor inflation. Okay, so if you don't factor inflation and you don't stay away from taxes, it destroys you. So we talked about somebody they got all the money in the bank. Okay, they're not keeping up with inflation and they're paying taxes. They're they're not their money. So people go, I ain't lost nothing. I'm going, if you had this money in the bank for 10 years, yeah, you have lost something. Because well, you've, lost, you've lost buying power. Mm. You know, so it won't buy what it bought 10 years ago. So you've lost money. So you have to factor in inflation. So if you're, if you're saving, you know, if I'm, if I'm kind of me and my wife are sitting, I'm not married, but if I was married and we were sitting at the table, well, man, we want to retire with this amount of money. Okay. Put the 3% into that over, over these years. And then you go, this is the amount you need. And you go, man, God, you know. I mean, now I need two million instead of one million saved up to get what I want. Absolutely, you know. So it's, but it's very doable, you know. Like if you look at five percent, if you saved five hundred dollars for thirty-five years, it, and it averaged eight percent, that's a hundred grand. So you know, what I'm saying, mm-hmm. like, now what if you were saving six grand a year for thirty-five years? You know, I mean, it's big money. It's big money. Yep. Um, so, but if we could do it with the Roth IRA, I think it's brilliant because, you know, there we go back to you go. Well, if I had 50,000, I'd be happy. I go, well, we do inflation, now you need 100,000. But what if we didn't have to pay taxes? So now we don't need 100,000. So, you know what I'm saying? Now we can lower what we need mm-hmm. by doing a Roth IRA. Right. So Roth IRA is the, is the golden nugget. Everybody that can participate in a Roth IRA needs to participate in a Roth IRA, in my opinion. And you can put what you want in it. So um, 401ks are not. So when you do a personal IRA, like you had a traditional or a Roth, you pick the investments. You get a 401k, you, you choose what's what's offered to you, okay? There's SEP IRAs. That's how we, we Self-employed did, pension. Yeah, that's what so I started at. So we, we started doing something like that. Um, so that was tax deferred, right? Yes. So you got you to – ta- everything that's a qualified plan is tax deferred, okay? Annuities are tax deferred. That's why I like those. Uh, so annuities is – you know, we'll, we'll stop here just so we've used that term a couple of times. That's an insurance company. Okay, it's an insurance-based product. Okay, they 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 go, hey, we'll take this amount of money, we'll give you this return. Okay, uh, it's tax deferred. So a lot of times, if you got people who are maxing out their IRAs, okay, and they put all they can put in IRA, they go, man, I need to save some more money for retirement. Well, we we could use an annuity at that point. Okay, and you can you can use annuities, and they got today they got them with riders or income riders or guarantee riders or, but the moral of the story is they're tax deferred, and you can you can use them in the security world or you can use them like in a fixed world. So like. If you go, hey, I, I just want a fixed rate of income. So you got a lot of your older couples, when they retire, we can incorporate annuities into their, their payout because we know the insurance company is going to guarantee this amount of money this year, regardless of what happens. Now, 
most annuities like that that have guarantees they have fees okay so we talked about that earlier so you really got to you got to you got to process what you're willing to give up in order what you really need at that point so when i'm growing money with young people i'm not a huge proponent of going the annuity route i want to go i want to put as much as we can in the iras find every vehicle then go that route you know because we can operate an ira cheaper we can operate after you max annuity. the ira out yeah get into the annuity you could absolutely absolutely now when i start getting up into the the the, the senior area i mean the, the, we start talking about retiring close to retiring you know to create income for life you know then i start going all right we may want to take some of this that we've worked up and use it because we can hedge it we can hedge the we can hedge the security world with the annuity world you know kind of put them together you know so um so that's that's an insurance-based product and you're gonna um you got to be really careful now I, in my profession we operate it kind of a, from a holistic point of view like i'm going to be the guy if i sit down you know rich I, I brokered his insurance for him everything for him you know but if you go to somebody who's strictly they can't do securities, but they, all they do is insurance. They're going to say, oh, you just need annuity. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're going to go to somebody who works for just a security firm that's not dealing with the annuities over here. They're going to go, you just, you just need to buy these stocks. So you got to be real careful. You know, my dad used to tell me, if the only tool you have in your tool belt is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Okay, so, you know, find somebody who can kind of work with you on a holistic, like, you know, this is what you're going to need at this point, but right now we can do this, we can do this. Not somebody can, this is all they can do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you want to be real careful when you when you're when you're shopping on the on the. So you're side. looking for like a financial advisor who maximizes asset allocation. Basically. I think so. Yeah. And so is that something that you've had to cultivate over time? Like like you were saying, not everyone someone will just work in insurance and just work in this. Is that something that you cultivated personally? Was that like a goal for you, or how did you end up gaining that diversification? It was just a choice. Like when I started, you know, I mean, I, that was the route I wanted to go. Like I didn't want to be all this because you know I, i've had some tragedy in my life uh, where i saw my uncle pass away at a really early age with with, with two children you know a wife um i've lost some, my brother passed away last year 40 years old so i'm a really firm believer in like it's not all about saving assets okay you have to protect okay there's a whole you know when i'm another another saying i'm very famous for saying is if you you know you need to plan okay to live forever, okay, which is a savings. But if you die too soon, which is insurance, or you become disabled, or you can't work along the way, which is a disability. So, you know what I mean? You get you got a plan to live forever, but be, be prepared to die too soon. And if something happens along the way, you know, your income is going to keep coming. So that's the holistic approach. And so finding a balance there, that's where I come in and go, all right, we, if this guy says I got like 100000 and we're going to save, all we can do is save 10%. Then I'm going to work on that 10% to try to maximize all I can in his retirement, make sure his wife and kids are taken care of if something happens to him. You know, vice versa. I want to try to get all that in there with that. And then we can work from there. So Rich can say this. Where we were six years ago is not where we are now. So we've every we've graduated. So, you, you know, it's a good advisor. And I'm not saying I'm a good advisor, but they're going to mm-hmm. they're going to grow with you. So they have to you, you build the platform right where. Don't don't get heavy on just one thing. You know, take take care of your family. I mean, that's, what ways I, do you advise people for protection? Like, what are some of those go tos more specifically? Like, you know, is it like, investing in this or is it, uh, you know, like uh, some people would do certain things to avoid probate or you know even that sort of thing. Like. How do you're saying? You're, how do you protect your family? I'm just talking about I'm at the protection side. I'm just I'm talking about life insurance. Right, that's what so, I'm saying. Like, would you tell people invest in life insurance? I invest would, in this. Yeah, I don't. No, I would not use life insurance as like a t- term for investing. Okay, mm-hmm. it's, it's not a security. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's you know it's it's a protection vehicle. You know, now you can leverage. I use it to leverage all the time. Mm-hmm. So I can I can leverage this. I can buy this to leverage my investment. So if I have Right now, all I'm concerned about with Rich, on the purpose of insurance, if some, if Rich, if Rich, was, if he was killed and somebody hits him in the truck, you know, I got to make yep. sure Hillary and the kids are okay. When we retire, I may, we may be on a whole different ballgame. So this comes into play. You got estate issues, okay? So a lot of my older seniors, we may, we may create a life insurance trust. Trust, okay? yeah, that's what we're to fund, you know. 
to help with estate costs. You know, mm-hmm. now estate tax are a whole lot higher. The limits are a whole lot higher than they were five, six years ago. So they're, that's fortunate. So, but I will, I'll also leverage my investments with, um, with insurance, which means go, if I have somebody who's older and we need to be more aggressive in the investment world, okay, which means we could get ourselves like our accounts don't, don't, you know, we hit some, they, does, they don't perform up to what we really needed them to. We may have been taking out more than what we really should have been taking out or having to be more aggressive. I may go, all right, we're going to carve off, you know, a couple grand of our retirement every year to buy a life insurance policy. So if this, you know, this money gets dwindled down when you're gone, it'll, re, you know, this, it'll back it up for your spouse. Okay. So I'll use it as a leveraging tool, but yeah, for a state leveraging, you what know, what was the life insurance that we're, that whenever, if you make it to a certain age, you get that money back. What was that? What do we call that? I don't know what you're talking about. The one where, <clears throat> I don't know, we were doing it, what we were talking about last night. Oh yeah. So you could, you can do like a limited pay. So like, so like on a on an insurance policy, you may go, hey, I I want to go, I want to pay for twenty years. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I want to use this. This will be a cash value. Twenty years, I it's paid up, so yep. I don't have to pay any more money on the insurance. So whether I if I want to choose, I can leave that money there. Mm-hmm. You know, and the money's gonna the insurance is paid up. I have the insurance and the cash. Mm-hmm. Okay, what you know, we we got that as a leveraging tool because we got you know we don't I don't want Rich to get too security heavy and everything where we don't have you know guaranteed money. So. Every so often, we we try to create more guaranteed vehicles so they kind of balance out. But yeah, you can do limited pay, you can do lifetime pay, you know, you can do stuff like that last forever that don't build any cash value. You know, I use a lot of that on the probate stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like just something would be there if they lived 120 years old. You know? When I had some discretionary income, having it, I started with term life insurance. Good call. And that was the first thing I did for my kids. So there was some money there, and it started when they were six and five, and there's always been, you know, like a million dollars at least or something. So if I'm dead, you know, they're they're going to be better. They're going to be all right. Hey, the insurance company wins 90%, 99% of the time. Yeah. Term never pays off. Right. So, I mean, it's the 1%. You right. Know? It's, and I, unfortunately, in my industry, I get to see the 1% all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I've never had, I've never had a wife come in my office and go, man, my husband had too much insurance. <laughs> you know, I wish you would have spent this kind of money. Right. Like I could tell you stories of of people coming to my office squalling. They don't know what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. You know, their husband didn't buy the insurance. So the husband wouldn't do that. You know, he didn't see the need for it. And like we're talking to guys that passed away in their forties. You know, with three kids, four kids. So it's it's imperative. Like you, it's just a balance. Once again, Solomon, I put my assets in six or seven different baskets because right. I know not what may befall the earth. Be wise. You know. It, you know, I mean, you I come here and train with Rich, like you don't just do power cleans for two straight days. Right. You know what I mean? Like you're right. going to do a little bit of everything, which yeah. I can't do half of it. But yeah. I, uh, so it's the same way. Yeah. Finance, same way as working out. You, you got to diversify. Yeah. You know what I mean? My wife works for the Social, Secur- Social Security Department. Okay. So she sits in front of people every day who are in their darkest moment. I can't even handle most of the stories she talks about. Because somebody has got cancer or somebody's going to die and they didn't have anything planned and they're in that space or, you know, and it's, I can't hardly even handle the stories. And so she's just like you. She has to hear that 1% every day. Yeah. It makes it very real when I kind of live in a world that's pretty rosy. Mm -hmm. Everything's kind of okay. If if you've never lived through it, it's hard to like picture it. Like if you're sitting and you're doing your planning. If you've never experienced it or, or real close in your family, you've experienced it. You've experienced it with, mm-hmm. with cousins. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's real. Mm-hmm. Like it's a, I mean, you, you don't never have to – I never have to go to somebody who's, who's lived through it and go, you know, you may want to consider right. shaving a few dollars and put it right – they're like, no, we need to do that. Right. We need to do that first, you know. Right. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's very, very viable in the financial planning. Um, so that 10%, figuring out how to break it up, you know. But you got to save, you know. you, you got to save – when we go back to go back to Joseph when he was talking to to the to the Pharaoh, he tried to save one fifth, mm-hmm. you know, put it in the king's treasury. Twenty percent. For so that was seven for seven, right? So I I use that analogy all the time. Why would you save twenty percent for year for year? So if I'm going to somebody, go man, if you're only going to save money for thirty years to retire for thirty years, you probably need to save twenty percent. What if you can work forty five years? You'd probably be retired thirty years. We well, don't have to save twenty percent. Mm-hmm. Biblical, there's so many biblical principles about, you know, Proverbs 21 5 says, the plans of the diligent lead to prosperity. Those who are hasty come to a quick fall. 
So, you know, when it comes to money, it's, it's always a long game. Money's a long game. But in today's world, we live in a microwave world, right? Everybody wants it now. You know, we want everything now. We want, we want, I want what it took my dad 40 years to get. I want it when I was 25. You know, I want yeah. the big house, the yeah. boat dock, you know, the speedboat. I want it all. Like, I was 25 and working. Like, I deserve it, you know? And my dad's like, no, nah, that's, not how, that's yeah. not how it works, son. And so getting that mentality of the long game, the plans of the diligent, being diligent, you know, not freaking out when the market's doing what it's doing today, you know, staying, staying focused on your goal. You know, we have a goal. Like, you're – you know, y'all have a goal to win the games. Like, that doesn't change if you have a bad week of training. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to keep going. You have to keep going. Good, bad, somebody's hurt, you keep going. And so, it's the same way with money. It's yeah. it's just a long game. Two things that will wreck your life permanently. Relationships and finances. Started brainwashing my kids when they were little, you know. <laughs> you make a bad and, – and because because I did it, both of them, I messed them both up. You make a wrong choice in a relationship, you'll pay for that for the rest of your life, and you mess with your finances, you won't have anything in the end. I mean, those are two things you got to do right. T teach, teach your, I mean, to people like Rich or this age that listens, I mean, it's imperative that you teach your children financial principles. You teach them because they're not going to teach them at school. Why is that not in the that's school? Why so that's I take something I don't understand. 20% of Lakeland's food every time. <laughs> really, really, she's got to pay her taxes. Okay, give me a bite. Hey, this, this is a true story. When I, when I got back from the military, I moved in back with my dad temporarily, like I had to find a place. And so I moved in, and he's, I asked him, I said, Dad, do you mind if I move in? He's like, well, Sure, I don't mind. Yeah, come on, your room's still there. I'm like, Great. He said, It's going to be $300 rent. I'm like, For what? He's like, well, we're going to feed you. Your mom's going to wash, you know, your clothes. 300 bucks, that's pretty cheap. Actually. And I was like, and I was, I was like, I was kind of thought, he's like, have you priced an apartment? I'm like, no. Nah. He's like, well, go price one. I looked around, I was like, all right, Dad, $300, I'm good with it. Right. <laughs> so I'm working, Feel. I'm working, and then I'd been working with the railroad. He got me the job about, you know, six, eight months into the railroad. He said, hey, are you, you put money in that 401k? And my dad was, I mean, I give him credit today. Like, he told me to save money. I like, I put I mean, I got time, you know, I got the money for the full Like I'm doing stuff, I'm fishing, hunting. Like I ain't, mm -hmm. I'm giving, I ain't giving no money. He's like, well, you know, they're going to give you a match, three percent. I'm like, I'll start later. He said, I will tell you what, if you start putting money in your four hundred one k next week, our rent goes up to five hundred dollars. Take your pick. And I was like, all right, I think I'll put money in my four hundred one k. Wow, it was that's, brilliant. That's, that's a smart and Listen, check that's this cool. out. Check this out. This how cool my dad was. So a, so I started saving money. When I was twenty one, investing and never stopped. I love it now. Like. Nothing phases me in the markets. Like, I just know where I'm going. Um, but when I got married, my dad, I'll never forget to him, he came to me with this big paper sack. Okay. And uh, he handed it to me. He said, this is for you and your wife. I was like, what is it? He said, this is every dollar you ever paid me for rent. <laughs> wow. It was all my cash. And so oh, it was, wow. he just said, I wanted to teach you a principle. That's wow. cool. You know, life, it's not free. Okay. You got, you got to pay for where you're going. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. That, they're not going to hand you nothing. And so, you know, I grew up on a farm. He, you know, he taught me to work hard, you know, then he, he taught me how to save money. So he's, you know, I'm thankful. That's so cool. you teach your kids. I mean, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to spend more time in the school today teaching your kids sexual education, things that you're like, I don't, I want to teach my kid this. Yeah. Okay. Instead well, I mean, of you going, don't learn any of this stuff. Huh? This, I mean, if you had a class on this stuff, no. how but much better would it be? the value alone would, that's, yeah. that's two populations. Why kids aren't taught from young age finance I don't understand. And the same with athletes, like especially collegiate athletes. Why has no one, it's like one of the most irresponsible demographics with money on the planet. Mm -hmm. And if one person, I mean, can you imagine that kid that signs that signing bonus for baseball or right. football and suddenly it's there's gone. a check with six or seven figures in their bank account? They have no idea. They don't know what an IRA is. Like, why is there no one changing the face of education for kids? I got, like I got, I got, or, I got I mean, the answer. I, I do have the answer for that. Why? Well, I, do you not think that this is the society wants our kids to be in, entangled with finances their whole life? If you're in bondage to finance, they have you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You're, you're, you're working today to pay last month's bills. Mm -hmm. and that's where most of America is. And I think if they, as long as they keep them there, they control the economy. They, they control the market space. If people were intelligent, I mean, if we really taught our kids on the front end how to be intelligent, you know, what it, how to save money, what, what you can afford to spend, you know, not to get in credit card, to pay your credit card off. You know, this is all, it would change the face of the economy. Like, these, you know what I mean? Just, it would the fact, change. just the fact that you go to college now and your college education puts you completely in debt 
makes the college education not as valuable as it was before. I Absolutely. Mean, we, have, we have a whole generation of people who end up at 21 or 22 completely in debt, and they'll work the rest of their entire life to try to get out of that. Mm-hmm. You and know? The, and the what, how they do these college loans is incredible, man. Right. They'll, they'll loan people, these kids, so much money. They're paying them. Like, they, they paid my, I paid my apartment with this money. Yeah, I paid they paid my pay groceries. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I my groceries. I pay, I'm like, what? How do you borrow money? That, that's, the, that's, the, that's what we're talking about. Like, they're teaching them to borrow money to buy your groceries. Mm-hmm. To buy everything. That's everything. insane. Like, I mean, and then they come out and they're captured. Like, we got them. Like, we got them a quarter million dollars in debt. And they're making $48,000 a year on their first job. How are you going to pay that <laughs> off? And they want a house. Right. Yeah. Sure, everybody else, well, they went to school. Right. And so, like, it's, um, it's, I think, so that's the answer. Like, I don't think they want to educate them. NFL know? now, there's requirements on the NFL. Mm-hmm. You know, they you, before you get your first paycheck, they have all kinds of classes they send you through. Mm-hmm. But I was in the football world for a long time, and these these kids come from no money. I was in the college football world. They come from no money, and they're they're putting their scholarship check in their bank account, direct deposit, and they don't have any clue what to do with that. And then the kid ends up in my office trying to figure out how to pay his bills mm-hmm. because he's not been counseled in that. Man, I, I talked to a couple of finance majors that were athletes, and I said, "Man, build an app." Somebody yes. build an app. Oh, that's a great idea. Get connected with Visa. Yeah. Build an app. That's cool. And go out there and teach college kids how to, yeah. you know, have an app where the money goes through the app and their bills come out and that's and wow. go and make a fortune. Yeah. It's a great idea. Teaching Silver? financial planning to kids, you know, at the university level. You should do that. Yeah. It's mm. a really good idea. Cut that out of the <laughs> yeah. Save that idea for later. <laughs> Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. <laughs> Just make the screen black. Go right. Kai. You got time for one more, L. Um, well, it's going to go back to like best pieces of advice. We've covered so much. Um, I mean, we've covered. Was there something we haven't covered? No, I mean, I was just going to kind of, we, we talked about the limits. You know, I, I wanted people to understand. I wanted people to understand the basics of a traditional Roth. I mean, um, you know, just, just the concept of, you know, understanding inflation, understanding long term, it's a long game. You know, um, ooh, you, huh? Biggest mistake people make with their taxes, or as thing as finances <laughs> pertain to tax. That's like could I be going taxes. down a really <laughs> big hole. But like just in like I we're looking for general. Too, so. Is the uh, biggest mistake uh, you need to pay them? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pay those taxes. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, here's what I'll say about taxes. It's funny that we will pay. A thousand dollars for a TV today, okay? But when I go to a client, I go, you need to go. You need to let a CPA do your taxes, okay? But you well, don't I, want to pay a thousand. I don't want to pay six hundred dollars. I'm like, okay. Well, what if they were able to keep you from paying an extra forty two hundred dollars this year? You know what I mean? Or, or tell you what you could do next year, where you would have to pay this extra three. So I'm saying, so mm-hmm. you know, I would I would challenge people when it comes to the tax world to hire a good accountant. Okay, it's That's worth it's worth it. Like yeah. you know, don't don't chinch or don't be a tightwad when it comes to the very thing that you're trying to protect is your finance. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it, it kills it. We'll spend another thing. Like people spend more time reading a manual on the TV they bought to, to install it than they do what Ellie's talking about to study what is a Roth IRA mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. every year. Like mm-hmm. I tell people, how much time have you spent like studying finances? Yeah, you know. I don't, I don't study finance. That's something my dad says so that, to me too all the time about CPAs is he says, get one and don't be afraid to shop them because as you were talking about skill sets with financial advisors, like each has their own and their different way of doing things. And if you think that something looks like a lot, you might not understand, but the idea is maybe ask your friend like, hey, how does, you know, because sometimes shopping them, not that, you know. You know, I'm all into loyalty. Don't get me wrong. But for the benefit of your finances, sometimes it's necessary to shop them and their specific skill sets because they are different. At least that's what he tells me. I could be wrong. Right. She's not saying to do that with financial advisors. No, that's... <laughs> that's not what she's saying. That's You're set saying. for life or something like that. Uh, all right. All right. I'm going to dig up the money. <laughs> dig it up. I'm dig it up. Move we'll get it to you. Move that dog over. Get to it. All right. All right. Jeez. I'm good with it. Just right. my arm. Good job, Brian. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. It was fun. That was great. It was fun. Right on I don't time. I think I'm going to jail either. So. <laughs> Cobra Kai. That's good. Cobra Kai. That's good. <laughs> um, 
That's pretty much it. We sold everything out from Black Friday. I think we're going to do some... Uh, we have a pre-sale. pre-sale. So if you missed pre-sale. it, go back and we're back. extending our Cyber Monday sale. That there stuff was epic, man. Yeah, it get good. it. We're doing a pre-sale order. It was good Mindset, looking. you got... Uh, when this launches, they'll probably have we, like we a day to sign up. Two right? days left to sign up for open enrollment. Okay. And we got a bunch of new people in the course, which is fantastic. So two the days. date, what is the end date? Uh, I don't know. Whatever two days is from now. Help me. 29th? 29th. 29th. Okay, so if we That's get up this up before the 29th, oh, sign it, up. If yeah, not, it get ready for uh, first <laughs> of the year. Time, first We're of the year. We'll open it back new up year's first year. Yeah. Cool. Peace. <laughs>